All right, Math 2, we've got Lesson 6.1.3, Special Right Triangles and Trigonometry. All right, so here we've got our two patterns of a 30-60-90 triangle and a 45-45-90 triangle. So we're going to fill in what the pattern's going to be. So let's start with the 30-60-90 triangle. So if this side is our A side, which is 1, then the a root 3 side, our long leg over here, would be 1 root 3, or just root 3. And then our hypotenuse would be 2 times a, so this is going to be 2 times 1, 2 on that side. For our 45-45-90 triangle, we know that our two legs are congruent to each other. So this side over here, ed, is going to be 1. And then in the pattern, we've got a, a, a root 2. So since a is 1, the hypotenuse is going to be 1 root 2 or just root 2. Okay, so now we're going to find the sine, cosine, and tangent of 30, 60, and 45 using uh, these numbers that we have over here. So 30 degrees, sine, we would use the opposite over the hypotenuse. So that'd be 1 over 2. Cosine of 30, that's adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent is root 3 over 2. That's going to be root 3 over 2. Tangent of 30, that's opposite over adjacent. So that's 1 over root 3. Now remember, you're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. So we're going to multiply the top and the bottom by root 3. And we get root 3 over 3. Uh, let's do the 60 degree angle. So sine of 60, so opposite over hypotenuse, that's root 3 over 2. So notice that the cosine of 30 is equal to the sine of 60. So these are always going to be the opposite of uh, one's going to equal the other. So sine of 60, we do opposite over hypotenuse. Uh, next one, cosine of 60. That's adjacent over hypotenuse. That's 1 over 2. So the sine of 30 is equal to the cosine of 60. Tangent of 60. So we're going to do opposite over adjacent. So that's root 3 over 1, which is just root 3. All right, 45, 45, 90 triangle. <clears throat> we're going to do the sine of 45. So you can use either angle since they're both 45. So we would do opposite over hypotenuse. So this would be 1 over root 2. But again, we're not allowed to have a radical in the denominator. So we're going to do root 2 over root 2. And we would end up with root 2 over 2. Cosine of 45, that'd be the adjacent over the hypotenuse, it's going to be the same exact thing, which is going to end up being root 2 over root over 2. A tangent of 45, that would be 1 over 1, opposite over adjacent, which is just 1. All right. So write the equations for the sine of theta and the cosine of theta. So the sine of an angle and the cosine of an angle. And oh, I just realized that I left off a picture. So let's draw the picture. Here's the picture that should have been there. All right, so let's say that we've got theta is our angle over here. We're going to make this side 1, this side x, and this side y. So if I wanted sine of theta, sine of theta would be um, x over 1. And the cosine of theta... would be y over 1. Okay, so now we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem 
to find out what the value of sine squared plus cosine squared would be. Now, I've got a little bit of a problem here. I have two different variables. So I need to rewrite one of my variables. I'm going to rewrite the, um, the y variable to see what y should be equal to using the Pythagorean theorem. So using the Pythagorean theorem, I can say that x squared plus y squared <clears throat> is equal to 1 squared. So that's just 1. So I'm going to subtract x squared from both sides. So y squared is equal to 1 minus x squared. And then to isolate the y, we would take the square root from both sides. So y would be equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared. So what we can do at this point is we can look at cosine of theta and rewrite y as the square root of 1 minus x squared. All right, now we're going to find the sine squared plus cosine squared. Okay, so we know that sine of theta in this case is x over 1. So we're going to plug in, instead of sine, we're going to plug in x. Then we're going to square it plus cosine squared, and we said that we could rewrite cosine in terms of x to be the square root of 1 minus x squared. So we'll do 1 of the square root of 1 minus x squared, and then we'll square it, and we want to see what that's supposed to equal to. Oops, I already gave the answer. It's going to be 1. Well, let's prove that. So x squared, okay, just x squared. Now remember, uh, squaring and square rooting are opposite operations, so this square is going to cancel out that square root, and it's going to just leave me with 1 minus x squared. Well, here I can see that the x squareds are canceling, and I just get 1 equals 1, which is kind of weird. So I get 1 equals 1 there. So what's that mean? I'm not quite sure. Let's see if we can get the relationship to work out on this one. So sine of 30 squared, if I do the sine of 30 squared, the sine of 30 we found out up here is 1 half, so I'm going to do 1 half squared plus the cosine of 30, cosine of 30 is root 3 over 2 squared, and we're going to see what that equals. So 1 half times 1 half is 1 fourth, Root 3 over 2 times root 3 over 2. So we're going to do root 3 times root 3. That's 3. And then 2 times 2 is 4. So that comes out to 1 fourth plus 3 fourth, which is 1. So it looks like sine squared cosine squared is equal to 1. Let's see if that holds up with sine of 45 and cosine of 45. So the sine of 45 was root 2 over 2. And the cosine of 45 was also root 2 over 2. So if I square root 2 over 2, root 2 times root 2 is 2, and 2 times 2 is 4. Root 2 over 2 is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. I get 2 fourths and 2 fourths, which is 1. So it looks like no matter what I do, sine squared plus cosine squared always ends up equaling 1. That's called the Pythagorean identity, and it's just the relationship between side squared and cosine squared. Sine squared plus cosine squared always equals 1. That's the identity. So, oops, sine squared plus cosine squared always equals 1. And we can use that to solve some other problems. So, so here it says that cosine of theta is 9 over 41, find the sine of theta. So if I want to find the sine of theta, I can say that the sine of theta squared plus the cosine of theta squared, and the cosine of theta is 9 over 41, that this should equal the number 1, because sine squared plus cosine squared equals 1. So this gives me sine of theta squared uh, 9 times 9 is 81, 
And then 41 times 41. Uh, what is that? Pull out a calculator. 41 squared, I should know this. That's 1681. equals 1. So I'm going to subtract 81 over 1681 from both sides. And then if I'm going to take 1 minus that, I should change 1 into 1681 over 1681. And so that's what sine squared is equal to. And so since the denominators are the same, I can just take 1681 minus 81. That's 1600 over 1681. And then I would take the square root of both sides. So the square root of 1600 is 40. So it looks like the sine of theta is 40. And then we know that the square root of uh, 1681, we just worked on that earlier. That's 41 times 41. So the sine of theta would be 40 over 41. Oh, sorry. You didn't see the last part. There we go. All right. That's all I got. See you later, Math Hard.